Today I'm going to show you how to put together the small fry puppet pattern. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue, all of the dolls will make it shake. If you want to be in the know and to play like a pro, subscribe to Gruttinger Puppets. Now these are just two examples of puppets that I've made using this pattern, but the limits really are endless. This is the small fry puppet pattern from my website. After you download it and print it out, you can make a puppet kind of like these, or whatever you come up with in your imagination. Now the techniques on how to put these puppets together are exactly the same. Now whether you make a character out of fleece or out of fur, the techniques on putting them together is exactly the same. This is Jimmy, a puppet that I made for a television commercial a couple years ago. Click here if you want to see how that commercial came out. Even though this is such a simple pattern, that doesn't mean your puppet has to be used for a simple project. And if you want to see a a little bit more about the behind the scenes of the making of that commercial, make sure to click the link right here. Since I already have a fleece example here, today is going to be the making of this character. And here are the supplies you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is the small fry pattern. You can download this from my website and I really appreciate your support. There's a couple pieces that have to be pieced together like this. Just remember to butt the ends together. Don't overlap them. If you want to make a monster, you'll need some fur or you can do the whole character with fleece instead. Today I'm going to use both. You'll also need some soft cushion foam. This is one inch, but you could also use half inch foam too. This is a half inch L200 EVA foam. I like to use this for the skull of the puppet, but you could use the previous foam for that too. I like to use some plastic storage bin for the mouth plate and a little piece of velvet or felt for the fabric mouth plate. Most people use black or red. Today I'm going to use black. Some 18 gauge armature wire for the fingers some rods for the arm rods. These happen to be bicycle spokes and some small dowels cut to about five inches. I like to use half inch or five eighths. So those are the materials. Now let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut out your pattern pieces so they lay out nicely. I like to back it with some cardstock that makes it a little bit easier to trace. And since I'm going to be making a monster today, let me start tracing that out onto fur. Make sure to pay attention to the nap of the fabric. It should be going up or down. Most people prefer to be going down and go ahead and trace it out. Flip it over and trace it again. If you want to save a little bit of sewing, you can line this up directly on that back seam. But if you're piecing the puppet together with scraps of fabric, you can really place it anywhere you want. But let me place it right here and then I'll trace it out. Now when you go to cut this out, you can use scissors or you can use a razor blade like this. If you're using scissors, make sure to do small cuts just cutting the back of the netting. That'll keep you from making a big mess. But it's much faster to use a razor blade and cut right on those lines. If you're going to sew this on a sewing machine, make sure to leave some seam allowance. But if you're going to sew it all by hand, just go ahead and cut straight on the line. Now when sewing this together, I like to pin it first. Now keep in mind that this is the mouth hole. So you're not going to stitch this closed, but you're going to close these two darts and then fold this rest of this in half and stitch it just like that. All right, now that those two darts are stitched together, let me fold this in half and I'm going to line up those two darts like this and put a pin there and then pin all the way down to where the mouth starts. And again, I normally would stitch all the way down along the back too, but since I mirrored the pattern, uh, that's already one piece. So I'm just going to stitch from here all the way to the tip here. Again, do not stitch the mouth closed. Okay, the top of the head is done. Now all we have to do is the chin and go down the belly. Let me pin that up first. Make sure that you're tucking the fur in if you're using fur so that it doesn't get caught up into your stitches. Mm -hmm. 
you may have noticed this circle too. It's labeled on the pattern as a recommended armhole. Now I almost never actually cut that hole out. That's usually just where I place the arms. But again, depending on the design of your character, you can really place the arms anywhere you want. But anyway, let me stitch from the chin to the bottom of the puppet. Next, I'm gonna trace out the mouth plate fabric. This is a piece of velvet. I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it out just like this. And again, make sure to leave seam allowance if you're gonna be stitching this on your machine. Mark the notches on the side and front. Then cut it out. Just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is set this mouth plate inside of this puppet's mouth. On the pattern, make sure to line up the top notch with the center seam here on the top of the head, the bottom notch at the center seam bottom of the jaw, and of course, the two side notches right at the corner of the mouth on each side. And I highly recommend pinning them in place. And once that's all pinned in, go ahead and stitch all the way around the edge. And just like that, it's all stitched in. All right, next I wanna make the foam skull for this puppet. For that, I like to use this L200 foam. This is my top choice of foam for making a fur puppet. If I use fleece, then I like to use the softer foam. But now I'm gonna trace out this foam headpiece, and I'm gonna trace it out twice. And then cut it out with a razor blade. There we go. Next, I wanna glue these darts together like that. For that, I like to use contact cement. Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. But you could also use hot glue. And stick it together just like this. There we go. Next, you glue the ends with the darts together like this. So let me put some more glue on there. All right, that's pretty dry. Now let me go ahead and put this together just like that. Be sure to line up these two darts there. Okay, now that we have this foam skull, next we're gonna make the plastic mouth plates. Next, I'm gonna trace the mouth plate onto some plastic like this. This is a lid to a storage bin, but you could use any type of thick plastic. Some people even use a thin wood, though I would not recommend cardboard. But I'm gonna trace out two of these and then cut them out. After I cut these out, then I like to soften the edges with some sandpaper. And then I also like to sand the top and bottom. That'll make it much easier for the glue to adhere to this plastic. And with the other side, it keeps it from getting too slick with hand sweat. All right, now that we have our mouth plates, let's attach one of them to the skull. The other one's gonna be for the bottom chin, which we'll do later. But once you have the top mouth plate, whichever side that you want, they are the same, so you can use either one. Line up that top notch with the front line on the skull. But this piece is symmetrical, so as long as it's lined up with one of those lines, you'll be fine. So let me put some glue on here, like this. And some glue along this edge here. I'll let that dry a little bit. All right, that looks pretty dry. Now let's attach them. So I'm gonna line up that top notch there with the front seam, and then just attach it as you go around, just like that. So that is the top of our mouth. Next, we wanna attach these two pieces to our puppet. So here's our puppet. Now what I'm gonna do is glue this mouth plate that's attached to the skull to the top of the mouth like this, and glue this bottom mouth plate to the bottom of the mouth like that. 
Now I like to take some of that contact cement and just put it around the edge of the lips. And same thing with this piece too, just around the edge here and around the edge here, like this. All right, I'm gonna let that get a little tacky and then I'll put it together. All right, I'll do the bottom jaw first. I'm just going to line up this center dot here with the center seam on the puppet, just like this and make sure it attaches all the way along the edge. You know, it's just a coincidence that this mouth plate is green and the fabric's all green. I hope that's obvious, but it, it doesn't matter what color this plastic is. But next I'm gonna do the top part of the skull, just the same way, lining up that center seam and sticking it down. There you go, and press it down really well like that. So now you have the strange monstrosity here, and all I'm gonna do is turn this inside out. Now this is a little bit big to go through that neck hole, but do not worry about it. Since it is foam, it can kind of scrunch up. So you do have to wrestle it in a little bit, but it will fit. So I'm just gonna start bringing it around like this. pushing it down to that hole. Even once it's turned, you might have to still kind of pull this back a little bit, but you should get a good fit. And there you have a pretty good start to a puppet. Now at this point, you could easily just start adding features and have a nice simple little puppet, but there's some more things you can add from the pattern as well. The next thing we're gonna do are some hands. Now I actually have a whole bunch of videos on how to make hands for your puppets on this channel if you want more details, but I'm also gonna go through it really quickly right here too. This is the hand pattern. For the foam part of the hand, you can just cut it right at that dotted line, or I like to just kind of fold it for when I'm tracing it, like this. It's best to use a half inch foam, but I don't have any half inch foam today, so I'm gonna use this one inch foam. If you have half inch foam, you should cut this out four times. If you have one inch foam, you can do it twice and just splice the hands in half. I'll show you how to do that too. There we go. And now since this is one inch foam, I have to slice these in half that way. I find the easiest way to do that is to do it one finger at a time. Like that. And then do the rest of the hand. So that I get two pieces like that. And do that for both. Next we're gonna do the arm rod. So I have these bicycle spokes here and I'm gonna take this end here with that little nub on it and bend this into a letter P shape. So I'll take some tweezers here and just bend it around. Next, get some 18 gauge wire and I like to cut it into about eight inch lengths. You'll need about eight of them. And then here's what you do. You just loop it through that P shape like this and then bend it in half, and then just twist it up. And these hands have four fingers, so we're gonna do this four times on each hand. All right, now that these are done, we want to measure them out so that they fit this hand. So what I do is I take one of these and I lay it right on the hand like this, and then just start bending these so that they line up with the fingers. And then I'll put a little line right at the tips of each of these fingers so I know where I should cut, but I'm actually not gonna cut on that line. I'm gonna cut just a hair longer than it so that I can bend the tips of those fingers around. And I'm gonna bend these tips so that they don't poke through the fingers. Just like that. Now I'm gonna put some hot glue to kind of hold all these fingers in place. 
And once that's dry, I like to cover each of these wires with hot glue too. This kind of encapsulates the wire and makes it a little bit stronger. But I don't use the hot glue for anything structural in the puppet. And do this for both of the hands, just like that. Next, I'm gonna drill the holes into these little handles. Make sure that the drill bit you use is the same size or just a hair larger than the wire you're using for the arm rods. I like the holes to be slightly off center. Once we have those holes, then I'm gonna put some super glue in there and then put in the rods. So I'm gonna fill this with super glue and then put these rods in just like that. And if you're not patient, you can use some of this, which is accelerator for the super glue. You just spray it on and it cures almost instantly. So this is ready to go. And now that these rods are done, let's glue them onto the hands. For that, I'm just gonna use some contact cement. Then I like to put a little bit of glue on the fingertips, almost like nail polish. And then after it dries, I just go ahead and pinch it. That'll help keep the wire from poking through. Then I just pinch these closed, and then these foam hands are ready to go. Now that we have the foam hands done, let's move on to the fleece covering for the hands. For the hands, I wanna use this fleece here. I'm just gonna trace out the hand patterns right on it. And then what I'm gonna do is fold it in half like this. And that's because I wanna stitch this on the sewing machine. If I stitch it while it's one piece, it'll be easier to cut out. So I'll just put a couple pins in and then I'll stitch it up. I'm just gonna not sew from here to here. That'll allow me to put the foam hands in. All right, there it is all stitched up, and now I'm just gonna cut this out. There we go, now let's stuff these hands. Here are our foam hands, and I just quickly painted those handles black too with spray paint but let's put them in. Before we can put them in, we have to turn these inside out. And to do that, I just like to use a pencil. Paintbrush or any skinny object should be able to help with this too. And sometimes it's handy to use too. So I'll put one in and then I'll stick the pencil here and turn it inside out. There we go, now these are ready to be stuffed. Now putting this foam inside of this hand is not super easy. It takes a little bit of wrestling. But to help make it easier, I'm gonna bend these fingers up like this and just start to slide them in. You're gonna slowly work it over each finger. Just like that. And do it for the other one too. There we go. After these hands are filled, now we have to fill the arms. And for that, I'm gonna use the same one inch foam. And I'm gonna trace the length of the same pattern for the thickness of the arms. So I'm gonna trace straight up to the edge and stop when I get to the hand. And then I'll trace it again here. There we go. And then I'll just cut this out. And now that I have these pieces, these are like cubes from the side. So I want to take the corners off. I'm not going to be able to get it perfectly round. I just don't want those sharp edges. So I'm going to trim them off with scissors. That looks good to me. And now I'm going to stuff them into the arms. So what I like to do is kind of slowly unravel this a little bit. And then I stick this in and I'll even use a pencil to help push it in further. And if you need to, you can kind of peek in here and give this end a little bit of a tug to pull it, to pull it through. There we go, that is 
That's a pretty good arm. Now let's do it again here. Now let's just stitch up this little seam right here. So I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna knot it right at the furthest opening closest to the pinky here. There we go, and now what I'm gonna do is a slip stitch to close this up. That's where you go back and forth. It's also called a ladder stitch, and I have a video that you can click on right here if you wanna see more specific details on how to do a ladder stitch and other stitches that are great for making puppets. And now after you stitch that up, the next thing I like to do is to try to hide these seams a little better. When you stitch on a sewing machine, it can sometimes leave this harsh line. And all I do is I take a little pin like this and gently rake over those seams and they start to vanish. You don't wanna over pick these seams because then you kind of have like a little a pile of fuzz, but just a little bit to agitate it. And over time of just using this puppet, those seams will start to vanish even more. Just like that. All right, now we have our puppet with these arms and we can attach them. If you remember, there was that little spot that I drew on the inside of where to place the arms. So I'm just gonna search for that spot and I'm gonna put a pin exactly where that arm goes. So now I know where to stitch it. I'm gonna stitch it right where that pin is, just like this. And just like that, the arms are attached. Now at this point, you have a fine little puppet that you could start adding features to. And if you wanna to skip to adding features, check in the chapter links down below and skip over to that part of the video. Or you can go to this timestamp right here. However, before I get to adding features, this pattern did come with legs. So I'm gonna show you how to put those together real quick too, before we get into adding all the features. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace the fabric pattern for the legs. And I am going to stitch this on the sewing machine this time, so I am going to add a little bit of seam allowance. And I'm going to cut out the feet patterns too. These I'm going to sew by hand. Now the top pieces of the feet have these little circles on them. You can cut those out too. I also like to make a little slit going up. That makes it a little bit easier for me to stitch them on. So I'll make that slit right there like that. Okay, here I have a top and a bottom of the feet. I'm gonna stitch them together like this. However, to leave room for the foam, I'm only gonna stitch from here to here, going all the way around the toe just like that. So let me butt this together. And then I'll pin it up. Next, I have one of the legs here, and what I'm gonna do is stitch this end here, the bottom, along the edges of this hole. So what I'm gonna do is stretch this out and open it like this. That way I can just stitch one straight line across. But I'm gonna pin it on to make it even easier for myself.
All right, now the foot's all stitched and the ankle is stitched. Next thing I'm gonna do is on the sewing machine quick, I'm just gonna zip down here and then just the heel will be left open. So I'm just gonna pin up this edge here and then I'm gonna stitch it on the sewing machine. There we go, these feet are all stitched up. Next thing I'm gonna do are the foam feet. And I'm gonna trace and cut the foam feet of this soft foam. Now what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue on the toes here and on the toes of the feet here. Now I'll let that just get a little tacky and then I'll attach it. All right, so now I'll stick this here. It's almost like it has flip flops on. And now that that's attached to the toe, we're gonna to turn the whole thing inside out through the heel, including the legs. So I'll use my trusty pencil here again. There we go, now let me cut out the leg foam using the leg foam pattern. Looks like I'm gonna to have to piece it together since I just have a little bit left. And just like before, I'm gonna take the corners off. There we go, that looks pretty good. There we go, now we're gonna stuff these legs. All right, now that foam is in the legs, next I'm gonna stitch up the back of the heel here. Now before I show you how I like to attach legs, let's trim down the fur so we can see our puppet a little bit better. Trimming the fur can make it a little easier to see some of the details of the shapes of our puppet. Some parts I like to trim down really short and texture it, other parts I like to leave a little longer. That's pretty good. Let's trim the face a little bit too. That'll make it easier to attach the features. I'm also gonna trim a little bit around the arms and the upper body. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now there's a lot of ways you can attach these legs to your puppet. You can use doll joints like this. You can even stitch them on. Some people like to use sew on snaps. But if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I don't really like to put legs on my puppets. Most of the time I just keep my puppets like this. Almost all the puppets behind me do not have legs. So anytime I make legs on a puppet that I'm gonna have for myself, I just use safety pins to attach them. Using safety pins like this makes it extremely easy to take the legs off of your puppet. So I'll just lay the puppet down and I will pin these legs on. These legs are symmetrical so it doesn't matter which side I put them on. And just like that you have a goofy little monster with some nice long legs. At this point the pattern is completely constructed but now you can add details. And don't feel limited by the design choices I'm gonna make. I'm gonna keep it very simple for now. You could really make this creature look however you want. You can make him look sad, happy, angry. He could have big ball eyes on the top of his head, smaller little black pupils in the middle of his head. And obviously you could use any color, fleece or fur. It's amazing how much variety you can get out of one pattern. But let's add some features. I found these eyes knocking around my shop. These are eyes I cast with the mold and then just glued some black felt to the back. If these look familiar, they're actually eyes that I originally made for the figment puppet that you can see right there. I ended up having to make a new set because these were just too small. But they might look pretty cool on this little guy. So let me find a good placement here. I think that looks good. Oh, 
Okay, that looks pretty good. And for pupils, I have these small animal eyes. They're only six millimeters big. I'm gonna put these on with a little bit of super glue, but I'm gonna make a pencil dot first to make sure I get the spot right. Ah. So that's how you put together the small fry pattern. Now, if you use this puppet, I would love to see the designs that you come up with. Because like I said earlier, even just using one pattern, you can come up with so many different designs for characters. This could easily be any type of animal too, by just adding different types of ears or a different type of nose. I've seen people make teddy bears and rabbits and all kinds of things. And if you want to see some of other people's ideas too, you can check out our Facebook group. If you type in puppet nerd in the groups, it should come up. I recently changed the name from Kruinger Puppet Tutorial Q&A to Puppet Puppet nerd. And here's a few photos of some of the different things that people came up with. And if you want to know where to find this pattern, go to KruingerPuppets.com and click Patterns. Or use the link down in the description. I really appreciate your support. It helps make this channel possible. And for more puppetry news and activities, make sure to check out PuppetNerd.com. There we have weekly updates with all the puppetry happenings. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.